Greetings, I am Lai. And I am Scandal. And let's play a game together. Woo, yeah, let's do it. Um, and why? Because of Naomi? Because the Funplex? It's a home and a family for the games. And for us, even though I'm brand new to the family. Maybe it's for the best. I sent that rando out the door in favor of this guy. Maybe we don't want customers like that. So, uh, you know, uh, Naomi? Because that's also the other, the other interesting thing that I love that my friend actually pointed out was arcade etiquette. The guy just going, you're taking too goddamn long. You're uh -huh. not letting me have my turn. And it's going, the guy is good at the game. Sometimes you really did just damn have to wait when somebody was that good at a game. Yeah, if they're like, not pumping in more quarters, if they're not paying more, they're just on the lives they're on. Right? Then arcade etiquette, as far as I've ever known, and gaming etiquette, is you wait till they die. Yep, and it, I, actually it was funny, my friend mentioning going, you put your quarters up when you want to go next. Uh -huh. Huh? That is completely normal, and I completely had forgotten about it, because I'll say, so even where I've been to arcades, I haven't been to arcades that much, because a lot of it was, in my experience, even though my parents had a lot of money, of going mm -hmm. that it's a money sink, basically, right. for a lot of people, because they are trying to basically fuel their games mm -hmm. with, you know, fuel their entire store with the games. With so the you've got to basically make those games harder or more difficult. Or... They require microtransactions to survive, because that's do. what they are. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And app games have tried to basically um, simulate the microtransactions required by old arcade games. Mm -hmm. Which I think is interesting, though, well, kind of still a, the only reason they have to do it is because otherwise you don't survive. Right. Say, but, like, I've never had, um, I'm not old enough to have experienced any of, like, the heyday of arcades or anything like right. that. Like, at all. But my dad really liked arcades, and so I have a lot of things that are pre my generation that I'm very familiar with. And as even was mentioned when I was a little kid, being like, wow, you're into classic rock? That's really weird. I'm like, it's all my dad listens to. So, eh, shrug. Right. Kind of thing, you know? And uh, classic rock That's like rock the thing is... with my dad going like, listening to the Beatles and the Beach Boys and mm -hmm. various different, like the Who and whatnot, and going like, I just know all that stuff because my dad did. Yep. Here we anyway, are. So yeah, uh, I, I also like, again, this, this connection of the characters know each other and they have feelings or thoughts about each other and that's really cool and again, something I haven't seen. Even when you have characters that all ostensibly know each other, they don't really, they haven't displayed this level of relationship in a game that I've played. Right. Or this style of game. Yes. So, uh, you know Naomi. He's happy to talk even while playing. Of course. Uh, I guess. I'm a Funplex regular. My name's Percy. You look like a Percy. You're you adorable. look like a Percy, like that. I'd hazard you're our new floor attendant. I was here when Francine seated you behind the desk earlier. I. Okay, Lies, you are very unobservant because you're like, this place was completely empty and nothing happened. I think you were just talking about there was no one coming to the price counter, not no one's here. I think that was probably the price counter. Because I was going to say, it really sounded like you were basically like, no one's here at all, rather than no one's interacting with the price counter. But you also told Pinky, when you met their lovely player, um, or, or actor, if you will, uh -huh. um, that, that, that there was no one out there. There's no crowds, there's no people, no customers kind of thing. But that might also be a level of basically assumptiveness of going in this culture. When a place is busy, you're supposed to have a ton of people in there. So that I'm is a level of bias, yeah. The one or two. So yeah, so like discounts the one or two little amounts of people which is the thing that a lot of people actually do well there's nobody here no there's like two or three people yeah well that's not yeah people. that doesn't count i've actually heard that before too well well that's not yeah that doesn't count yeah right okay also i'm like okay lies lies my dude my bro my 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 mc you're like, I'm going to solve this problem and then deal with two other problems. Uh -huh. Asking him about himself right now, <laughs> for me, totally defies the urgency of the other two situations. Right. So while I want to ask him, this feels like a total non sequitur to not come back back to him right. if there's still a giant crowd yelling and someone, you know, cursing up a storm. All right. Anyway, uh, that's me. Last Scandal Arcade Wrangler and, well then, you know, Terror of the Well it's a pleasure floor. to make your acquaintance, and I look forward to getting to know you better. You're adorable. It is pretty strong, British. All right, so, uh, you've seriously just been playing Moopy all day, huh? What can I say? It's my calling. You're adorable. I actually owned a Moopy cabinet once. Had it in my flat. But playing it by myself, all alone in the dark, it's not the same. I need the atmosphere. So he Hang never, a fuck on. He never intended to take it Are you him. British or Aussie? I say that sounded a That's, little more Aussie to me. I think somebody... Cross their accents a little bit. Mm, yeah, I'm like, hang on. That's. 
I know, okay, so I know basically that the, 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 the population that tends to get more attention, not the Aboriginal population, unfortunately, um, is in, the British colonizers. Is it, oh. it was the British colonizers, but more specifically, basically descendants of British prisoners, mm -hmm. because that was actually what Australia was used a lot for, based off of my understanding. The storage of our prison populace. Yeah, that's what they did. It's fucking terrible. And it then, has you know, been made fun of in all kinds of cartoons and things going, yeah. yep, you have your British prisoners, you send them over to Australia. Yep. And I'm just like, that That sounds way more Aussie than British. But feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. It's just, that's what I'm picking up on. Not really. It might be a regional British dialect that we're not familiar with as well. It's true. Or it could be that the voice actor doesn't have a full handle on it in the same way that you went, British what? Yeah, and right. They're trying to sort of get it as they go along. Right. I, I need the atmosphere. I, you know what? I kind of, I, I feel him. I uh -huh. understand that, but it also totally removes the gravity of the situation of going. He was never going to take the game with him anyway. Right. And going. That's that's interesting. Also, though, it seems like a big, interesting power move to suddenly be like, this problem has never happened ever before. Right. And I'll just pay you off, like solving it's everything fine. with money. It's inter It suggests an interesting personality. It does. The beeps and boops. No, and those you eventually learn to filter out. I mean, everything. The games, the lights, the kids, the feeling of being in an arcade. Mm. I score my best when I'm in real world conditions. I feel that one. Yeah. It's like, all about the emotions, the laughter and the tears, the excitement of competition. I, there is a level of that. Like I feel him big time. Like <laughs> atmosphere is a big damn thing. Like mm. I, I need a vibe in the room. Yeah. Oh, um, kind of thing. Like, and I, I always was like that, that in my homework too. Swirling chaos of human emotions around me to play at my finest. I also yes. just want lies to be interjecting and going, you know, the mob crowd screaming over there, the one person <laughs> shouting expectatives over there, in other words, I'll, to do my job I'll elsewhere. I'll be right back, actually. In other words, uh, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just waiting. Naomi gets that. She keeps Moopy in top condition for the day that I eventually land my high score. Oh, uh, what's the uh, current world record then? About three and a half million. Oh. Right, this guy has been standing here since I was working the morning shift, hours and hours, and he's still only about 7.20 into his game. Woo! Mm. I, okay, I have encountered games like that where, like, I've gone, I want to be at the high score table, and then I give it, I quit, not because I don't feel like I can get there, but because I'm going, that's 9 or 15 or 22 hours of consecutive gameplay, right. and I don't care enough to spend an entire day on it, or two or three days sometimes of consecutive gameplay. Like, there's a few online games that I play, including I've, I've made it known that I play Mara Pets, and it's it's sort of a weird little habit that I have off in a corner. I right. say, but the thing is, is some of the high scores on those games, with the speed that the game gives gives you score and the speed that the graphics run, you need to play those games for five, six, or seven hours. Yep. And you can't be doing anything else on the site while you're doing that to get those scores. And I'm just like, I just can't feel it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I can't imagine him being in anything but top health condition to try this. Guy's gotta have legs made out of carbon fiber and a bladder of tungsten. Hmm. Uh, sort of planning. I just let a few extra lives drain out whenever I need to go pee. Uh, also, he, uh, Maybe a psychic. Huh. There's that. I, on the other hand, when I've done marathon gaming of whatever kind, yeah, even if it's a game that plays consecutively, if you've got to pee, one, you sort of budget your liquid. Yep. And you think about it in the same way that you can sort of schedule your pee breaks around whatever your job or school schedule is. Right. Like, if that's when their break is, it's not for every four hours, then your bladder learns that kind of thing. Right. And if you know either there's a cutscene in between levels or it's a long load-in when you do some certain achievement or whatever, you could be like, and that's when I'm going to go pee. Right. All right. I feel like I should... Let him get back to his game, except for I really should be doing my job, and that's why I feel like I should let him get back to it. But burning questions, they burn like fire. I feel like I should be doing my job, because I can still hear the things going on around me that were going on around me, I think. So I'm suddenly having an urgency dissonance with this game. Right. Like, real strong going, are yeah. those other two things still happening or not? I wonder if it was a sort of, you get to pick, like, if depending on what you picked, you would run into different people. Because that's why I was like, actually, we had the conversation in between this, where I was like, eh, now I actually think that each of the options would give you a different, basically new Possible potential romance option. Romance option. Okay. So I, I'm thinking in this case, it's like, yeah, now we're dropping it because mm, mm. it's one of those mechanics you kind of suffer with because you're like, no, 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 you should really get to know them. But I'm like, yeah, but mm. none of these are things that I would want to ask. Right. So, so I'm trying to figure, figure out, out what lies would ask. All right. right. 
I think Lives has been very preoccupied with the income thing. Right. And really, they have been mentioned like socioeconomic status and backgrounds and being poor a lot of times. So what's actually just written in the dialogue that we've run into so far, I think the question that's going to be burning in their mind of, I don't know how to not ask this and I can't walk away to do the rest of my job because, uh, so you must have a solid job. There we go. Good income. Um, so you must have a solid job. Good income. If you don't mind me commenting on it, that's a lot of money to just have on your person. What do you do for a living? Mm. Trust fund. Eh, this and that. Drugs? Ah! Drugs. Meow. Drugs? Meow. Drugs. Drugs. Got some drugs. Drugs. No, I don't. No, I no, don't. No. He doesn't really seem to care to talk about his work. Uh, not in a guarded way, just less interesting than his current maze. Is that reasonable? Uh, maybe he's actually the head of an international diamond smuggling ring. Ah! <laughs> they thought of smuggling as well. Yes! I'm like, drugs? I like smuggling. Yes! Yes! They had stones inside arcade games. Who knows? Huh. Day trading. Ah. Uh, uh huh. Day trading. Stocks and bonds. Anybody can do it if they have a head for the numbers. It's really nothing important. Or maybe he's a day trader. Don't so, think so. I don't feel people are defined by their work. I know the arcade is home to those who've made their passion into their work, but it's the passion that matters more. Of my passions, the same as anyone, I look forward to learning yours as well. Ah. When I'm not deep in the middle of a game, I mean. Oh, right. I... My passions as well. Okay. Sure. Uh, sure. I, he's getting more and more distracted by the game. I should leave him be. I will. I will leave him be. I have to uh, do, do a thing uh, about a, a thing now. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Be shame, you mixed scandal. See, that's the thing, too, is going, the, here's the assumed gender. <sighs> and I like that they use Mick. You know, Mix here, because Mix is a fun little um, pronoun. That, uh, yeah. Like, like, or, or honorific. Sorry, honorific, it's an honorific yeah. that I really enjoyed for neither being Mr. or Mrs., what have you. Um, I was like, or Ms., if you will. Right. I was like, but, like, and again, how did he know our pronouns? Right. And again, is there some kind of biological or physiological or like social indicator of what you are whether that's like clothing style uh -huh. or and going and, and in sort of in the way of going if you're going to be a business person you wear a business suit if you're going to be non-binary do you need to dress for it right. and that would be my question and going there are people going if you're going to be a drag queen you're going to dress like a drag queen kind of thing and if you just wear you know the oh yeah i'm just wearing you know basically mall mom clothes kind of thing i'm i am your basically suburban walmart mom that might not be drag enough for a lot of drag for, for, right. to recognize you right on the other hand i would love to see you know suburban walmart mom drag interpretation that'd be <laughs> fun that'd be um, great. i was just say but like I, I would like to know how they know your pronouns, and that would be cool. Right. Also, how do we know if we know their pronouns? Right? That'd be nice, too. All right, so that's the only thing that I've got so far. That's okay. And again, this is one of those things that sometimes I don't want to take away this from people of just going like, yes, you just know who I am. I never have to talk about this. It's mm -hmm. never a discussion. It's never brought up. But it'd be really assumed. cool to know the mechanic, to know what that piece of the, their world that is. Right. All right. Uh, yet another weird encounter in a string of... Weird encounters. I am not usually this social, ever. <laughs> By the end, he sounded more like the high score junkies you hear about in documentaries. Obsessed, driven, uh, kind of strange, having taken on a um, money profession that supports his gaming habit rather than the gaming habit that's, you know, just a stress relief for his money profession. I don't know, but that's not the impression I had of him from the beginning. He smiled when talking about not splitting up the arcade. Yeah, like yeah. he seems... Soft and Genial. thoughtful. Yeah. Like, he seems very... He's kind of cute. Uh-huh. Like, he's kind of cute. Uh. Oh. All right. There's something more going on here, but, uh, well, he's a fun plus regular, I can tell. There'll be plenty of time to learn more later. I've got work to do. Yeah, here All we right. go. Two more problems? Yes. Because we did say... The reason I was concerned about the urgency was because it was specifically set up in the character of going... I should have time to handle all three. Yes. So it suggested to us that we should be able to theoretically handle all three. Yes. And so I'm going, where's your now sense of urgency? Because it really was urgent right at the beginning. Yes. All right. Let's see uh, what to handle next. Someone cursing up a storm, loud crowd. I think loud crowds are relatively fairly normal. So I think if we're, if we're concerned, like we've already expressed that our concern with cursing, there's kids here. So I think cursing at Fist of Discomfort. Yep, let's go take care of it. I just, the implication of Fist of Discomfort though, I'm just like, <laughs> it's a proctology game. <laughs> Street Fighter from another angle. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We're just high. There we go! <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of shouting coming from the center of the arcade where a Fist of Discomfort is being played. I remember I was telling me all about it earlier today when I was bored to death at the ticket desk. 
oh, so we are we are telling our uh, like. We are we are basically adding in stuff that happened in the past. Right, nice. Okay, okay and we're gonna have okay. So this callback. So sometimes I know we've gotten kind of frustrated with flashbacks, but they're like literally you just did this, and now uh-huh. we're having a flashback. But to this five is one seconds ago. We didn't actually see. No, we. This is um filling in information. No, no, no. Did we've we? seen this. This was a while ago. Okay. So I personally appreciate this because this was when we did our original playthrough in regards oh. to this. I like, totally forgot about this. Oh uh, yeah, no, you're. I remember this. Okay, I, cool. <clears throat> Fist of Discomfort, or FOD, is one of the most popular games in the esports circuits. It's been a staple of the scene for over six years. Right. No, I think it sounds familiar now. One year, Team Wicked Prodigies took on the Unreal and came back with a win in the dying seconds of a tiebreaker match to take home a record $5 million prize pot. I don't remember that part. That's uh, a lot of moolah. And how? Okay, so how does it work? It's a hybrid of real-time strategy and button mash brawling. Fight your way down the top and bottom lanes, clearing waves of ninjas to finally topple the anime dojo. I think this is adding more than the other one is. I mean, I th- it could, and also I'm like, I swear I remember like parts of this being in there. That's what sure. I said. Yeah. I think there was a simple version of this, and this is extrapolating further on it. Mm. So I think we, we might have to go back and check, but I really think this is basically going, we're going to clarify what actually happened in that time, but it also implies that you can have conversations that are more detailed than what's shown on screen. Which is nice. And that's nice, because a lot of times games really really are would be more solid and relationships would be if you can assume more talking is happening than what you see. Mm, right. All right. But that's the action part. The strategy part involves using special summons, purchased items, and ninja summons. Special F- abilities and ninja summons. Special abilities, excuse me. Uh, FOD is sheer elegance in its implicity, the way the different game systems interweave to form one masterpiece of esports perfection. So, uh, summon good ninjas, punch bad ninjas, smash dojo. Huh. Wow! I'd say boiling down a rich game of action and strategy played by the world, uh, played the world over by top gamers in such a way is a bit degrading, but sure, okay, have it your way. Yep. I, uh, all of which is super interesting and stuff, but right now all I care about is dealing with the loudmouth currently playing the game. Uh, the closer I get, the louder the yelling gets. Most of these are words that, uh, oh. What the f- all right, so one of these is dateable and one of these is rando. Yep. You can see, I actually enjoy that graphic convention. I mean, I like that there is essentially this, this ver- that there's this very clear distinction between them, but also that you're randos, you're, you're non, you know, p- like, like, um, characters, like, or main characters, if you will, or secondary characters are, are demarcated in some way, are indicated. Right. So I kind of, I, I, I kind of like this convention. It's kind of cool. Right. Rather than having them just be shadow puppets. Right. And if you haven't seen any of our stuff done by, Genius, um, games. Genius games, then you don't know what a shadow puppet is, but it's there. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Um, what the actual was that? That's, that's this yeah. one. Uh-huh. The okay. actual bleep was that? I mean, do you want me to do it or do you want I'm going to pick up another one. Cause I All gotta right. have one more. All right. Uh, not, no, those are definitely all words my mother would disapprove of. You've got to be bleeping, I did because it says it. You gotta be fucking with me. Oh, I uh, shitting me, I think it's what it meant to be. I have there been. is no fucking way that's even plausible. Those hitboxes don't even fucking connect. Fuck this game, fuck it all night long. Hard. <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, this is far from over, scrub. Look at... I saved up a little something extra special for you. I love the little illustration in the background. It's so classic dojo game, Uh especially with the mountains in the background. The whole, like, this is what China looks like, clouds and mountains. With these cool, you know, like, basically your pagoda-style houses. I've been baiting you into attacking my sensei, which you fell for. Hard! Uh, Oh, hey. I forget to mention that I bought an extra ultimate technique scroll from my dojo. Oops, maybe. Wait, what? Rando Calrissian, by the way. Yes, I know. It's ah, Rando Calrissian. You haven't been farming. How could? Ah, XP share technique with creep waves. Take this. Fireball fucking explosive death claw technique. What? How could you defeat me? Oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh. Oh, GG. <laughs> oh, GG, Potter. No uh, one can defeat me, Queen B. No one can. I, I gotta go with that that's voice. It's so now. good. No one can defeat me, Queen B. My dry eyes, painfully blinking, makes me realize I've been standing here, watching intently during the whole exchange. I literally did nothing. 
I'm not 100% sure what just happened, but that didn't matter. I was completely sucked in. Couldn't tear my eyes away. Guess why? There's, um, well, I guess there wasn't really a crowd here, but damn. damn. I, was, <laughs> I was totally just, it was like watching a train wreck. I mean, if the train was the arcade game and the wreck was that guy's face. Hey, Ken, uh, what are you staring at? Never seen a champion of my caliber before? Uh, oh, uh, ah. Uh, Seeing as I don't even know how to begin to start to even consider how to respond to her question, I opt to take a moment to collect my thoughts. Uh, from what I've somehow gathered, she goes by Queen Bee, I guess? I mean, she does have that queen motif, and she did say Queen Bee was in there somewhere in that exchange of yelling. Uh, that jacket she's wearing identifies her as a member of L7 Gaming, an arcade esports team. Uh, all right. And uh, uh, she's the most direct, fierce person I met. All day. Uh, that's saying a lot, considering who I've run into so far. We need you to know that everyone has strong personalities. Maybe that's why I was like, soft boy. Percy is cute, because <laughs> everyone else really strong personalities him. I am here to play games and be supportive. I am here. Good. Uh, I'm just like, it's all right. I'm uh, here for you. Uh, let's see. Why so rude, though? I, I feel like you are really, like, I feel like more and more we're, like, opposed to strong personalities, because, again, we're kind of soft, but also sort of the various judgments that we've made building this character so far. It's right? going to be, why so rude, though? What a sore winner. Ah, uh, but we're going to have to check that out in the, in next, the next one! one! Yeah! So thank you very much, guys, then, for joining us. If you like what we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and also share our videos if you're having a good time with us. Please also feel free to go check out our Co-Fire Patreon. I've got some links in the description down below. And I have been Scandal. And I have been Lies. And, and it was great playing with you. Bye!